welcome to another Lakehead International Live. Uh, good morning, good evening, good afternoon um, to our viewers around the world. I want to thank you for joining us. Um, as the screen shows you, today we will be chatting with the Faculty of Social Sciences and Humanities, and we do have a special guest, Dr. Betsy Birmingham, who is the Dean of the entire faculty. So we are certainly happy to have her today uh, to share her knowledge about program offerings, unique learning opportunities, success stories, and so much more. Um, before we dive into the actual content, uh, I wanted to chat about uh, the Lakehead International Live series and just give you a brief uh, background about it. So the Lakehead International Live series is a fun inform and informative way for you as our audience members to connect with us every day, so Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Um, and so the previous lives that we've hosted, uh, earlier this week on Monday we had the tuition and fees payments. On Tuesday, we had a Instagram Live with Ashri, who is a current student in psychology from India. On Wednesday, we did our Wednesday weekly admissions update. And on Thursday, we met with Katya, a business student on the Thunder Bay campus from Honduras. So all of those sessions are now live on our YouTube channel as recordings. So you can always check out our YouTube channel. The playlist that you're looking for is Lakehead International Lives. Some of the upcoming events that we have. So Monday next week is a holiday here in Canada, so we will be offline. Um, but that doesn't mean that necessarily you can still connect with us. Our recruiters that are in country, some of them are still working on Monday, so I certainly encourage you to reach out uh, based on what region you're coming from. But moving forward on Tuesday, we have Michelle, who is an environmental science student within the Faculty of Social Science and Environmental Studies, pardon me. Um, then on Wednesday, we'll do another Wednesday weekly admissions update with both undergrad and grad there. On Thunderwolf Thursday, uh, we will have another current student joining us to do an Instagram Live for an hour. Uh, that is to be announced, though. We haven't determined which student will be hosting quite yet. And last but not least, next Friday, we'll be doing a Faculty Friday with Nursing. So we will be joined uh, with a faculty member and we'll be chatting all about nursing. So, like I said, uh, I am joined by a couple special guests today. Um, to start off, though, my name is Jordan. I am the International New and Social Media Officer here at Lakehead University. Um, what that means is that I help oversee our online presence, our digital recruitment, uh, manage social media, do live events, all sorts of stuff. Um, and I'll pass off to Patrick now to introduce himself and chat about what he does here at Lakehead. Hello everyone, um, my name is Patrick Carr. I'm one of the international recruitment officers here at Lakehead University. Um, I primarily work with students uh, out of the Caribbean, out of Africa and the Middle East, but I'm happy to be here today to answer questions for all of my colleagues who are based all over the world. Um, and I'm excited to talk, uh, talk to you all today. Awesome, and then I'll pass off to Dr. Betsy Birmingham to introduce herself and chat what, about, what she does here at Lakehead. Hi everybody, um, my name's Betsy and I'm the Dean of the Faculty of Social Sciences and Humanities and that means that I work with the students, faculty and staff of 15 different units on our campus um, that focus on uh, the content of social sciences and humanities, but also really work with our um, academic plan which has um, pillars that include social justice, outreach to community, um, and a variety of other really important skills and abilities that you would gain at Lakehead. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm definitely excited to dive into the content. Um, so I'll, uh, first off, I'll, I'll chat about what we're going to cover, and then uh, we'll certainly start chatting. So what, what are we going to cover today? We're going to do a broad overview of Lakehead University, just to give you a rough idea. We're gonna chat about the Faculty of Social Sciences and Humanities. We'll dive into the program offerings and we'll chat about both undergraduate and graduate programs. We'll do some program highlights to some of the key programs within the faculty. Um, we'll also chat about the unique learning opportunities within different programs. So uh, those experiential learning opportunities that are really unique to Lakehead, um, we definitely wanna showcase those. And last but not least, we'll chat about success stories. So where have our graduates gone? What have they done? Um, and we'll, we'll definitely answer some questions today too. 
So things to remember throughout today's session. If you like what you see, don't worry. Like I've mentioned before, uh, we do record these sessions and then upload them to our YouTube channel after the fact. So if you do have to head out early or for example, if you leave, uh, join late, you certainly can cover what you may have missed. Um, or if you just want to watch it a second time and hear that one answer once again, um, of course, you have all the power to do that on our YouTube channel. If you do have questions today, I empower you to use the Q&A function. And using the Q&A function will allow us to uh, receive those questions in a central location and answer them as they come in. If you're joining us on Facebook Live, you can use the comment section. And we do have Lakehead experts behind the scenes working on today's webinar as well and answering those questions. And like I said, and to reiterate, if you're watching this as a recording on any one of our channels, if you do use the comment section to ask that question, we'll receive that notification and we'll certainly get back to you. Last thing to remember is to stay connected with us, follow us on our social media channels. We are on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and if you're joining us from China, we are on Weibo, WeChat, and Yoku. So we are posting regularly on there with uh, major university updates or announcements, uh, updates about upcoming live events that we'll be participating in and hosting, and so much more. We're giving a sneak peek to the university life. So I certainly encourage you to do that. All of our channels have um, Lakehead International in the title, so it's quite easy to find for you as well. So next I'm going to chat a bit about uh, Lakehead University. So I want to welcome everyone to Lakehead and I'll chat about some of the things that we're really, really proud about. So Lakehead University is recognized as the number one undergraduate research university in Canada. And we did receive that ranking for five consecutive years now. Um, so it really speaks to the fact uh, that we, we are providing a significant number of opportunities for our undergraduate students to be involved in research. Um, we typically see research more heavily focused on the graduate side, but we've re recognized the value in having our undergraduate students also participate in significant research opportunities. So uh, we have been recognized for five years in a row now, which is uh, something we're very proud about, of course. Another thing that we're proud about is that we are recognized within Canada's top 10 universities for primarily undergraduate studies. Um, so speaking to the many universities across Canada, uh, of course, being held so highly among them. Um, we're very proud about that. And last but not least, um, we're also among the top universities ranked by Times Higher Education. So we, uh, they do an annual ranking for all the universities in the world. Um, and we were in the top ranking for that. We were also recently placed in the top 100 universities in the world based on impact. Um, and so if you're interested in learning more about that, I encourage you to check out our uh, Facebook or Instagram channels. And we do have some posts up about when we made that announcement and what that, uh, what that entailed. So next we're going to dive into the academics at Lakehead. Um, I will certainly chat briefly about all of the academics and then we'll dive into social sciences and humanities. So as you can see on our screen, here are all of our academic faculties. We have business administration, engineering, science, and environmental studies, natural resources management, education, social sciences and humanities, which we're going to dive into, of course, health and behavioral sciences, law, medicine, and graduate studies. So we do have uh, quite a lot of faculties and we've dove into many of these already. So if you're uh, interested in maybe pursuing a, another major or a minor or just weighing your options at this point and you want to learn more about, for example, business administration, we do have a live on our YouTube channel as well that you can check out. Otherwise, we are going to dive into social sciences and humanities and at this point I will pass it off to uh, Dr. Betsy Birmingham to do the broad overview of the faculty and chat more. Okay, great. Um, I guess I just want to start by talking about overall where we are as a faculty and what we're trying to do here because even though we're 15 different um, uh, sort of units and many degrees within those units, one of the things that we're able to offer all of our students is a strong background in the content of social science and humanities areas with a set of skills to go with those that will help people get out into the world um, once you have finished your degree or to go on to graduate school. But a lot of the kinds of research that we do would help uh, students do either of those things once they finish their degrees. And so um, as one of, uh, as one of the best uh, universities for um, 
social science and humanities research, we have faculty in every single one of our uh, departments that have research uh, grants in place and that have large research teams composed of um, undergraduate and graduate students. And those teams are out there trying to answer questions that are really important to our world. Right now, we have five different people working on COVID. 19, for example, in our faculty, even though we aren't a medical faculty, there are many social science um, and humanities based impacts that they're trying to understand better and they're leading student teams, even through distance and through the summer to work on those questions. And so we're doing um, a, a great job, I think, in that area of preparing students to be ready to go out into the world and answer some of those big questions that the world is fa uh, that we're faced with right now. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for uh, elaborating on that. And also, it's, it's very interesting and exciting to hear that uh, our faculty and as well as students are being uh, interacted with and engaging with the global pandemic in the current situation and looking into some of the solutions that are definitely going to be needed in the, the coming months, weeks, years, uh, based on what is happening. So next, I would like to talk about uh, the double degrees and double majors. Um, I know that students are kind of confused by this topic sometimes, or they don't understand the value in it. So I always like to pose that question. Betsy, could you elaborate on why it's important for students to do double majors in humanities courses, if, if that's an option for them, of course? Yes, um, most of our programs allow for double degrees or double majors. And uh, one of the reasons that we know it's useful is because there've been a lot of, uh, there's been research lately about the value of humanities and social sciences degrees. And one of the things that we've discover, discovered is that having a humanities or social science degree with one other skill, and that could be another major or another minor or another program, uh, actually sets our students up for better success in the future, not only than having a single degree, but then having um, degrees in other areas. And so, uh, for example, the study that I saw about four years ago um, in the Chronicle of Higher Education, which is a US-based um, uh, um, it's a US-based uh, magazine about higher education. Mm -hmm. One of the things that they were looking at was comparing humanities and social sciences majors to business majors um, based on future outcomes. And one of the things they discovered is that humanities majors um, do better both in terms of being able to uh, progress through their degree quickly and um, in terms of getting uh, salaries within five years that are better than competitors in other areas if they have been able to get one other skill with that. And so sometimes that's a computer science mi minor, sometimes that's a business degree, and sometimes that's another skill or a degree within um, social sciences and humanities. And we'd be um, thrilled to talk to you about all of those options if you have questions. Awesome, that is certainly interesting to hear uh, what the study revealed based on doing those double majors and the success of graduates with double majors compared to single major graduates and other faculties and other fields of expertise. Um, so chatting about those program offerings, um, we, we are going to dive into undergraduate programs and then graduate programs is to follow, but I would like to remind our audience, if you have any questions uh, regarding any of the information on the screen, anything we chat about, any general questions about Lakehead, we are here to answer those today. You can use the Q&A function on Zoom if you're joining us live on Zoom. If you're watching on Facebook, you can always use the comment section. And if you're watching this as a recording, you can comment on that video and we will receive the notification and get back to you. Otherwise, I'll pass it off to Betsy to chat about the undergraduate programs within social sciences and humanities. Okay, I don't want to spend too much time talking about each of these degrees individually, but I will just sort of run through them quickly because they are right here on the screen and might talk about sort of one of their most impressive features. Um, criminology is one of our largest programs and our students coming from the criminology programs are getting placed uh, broadly in uh, law, law school, um, in actual 
criminology focused degrees and um, Aurelia, the Aurelia campus where criminology is housed is right across the street from where they're building the new OPP building and that's the Ontario Provincial Police. And so our students have a wide variety of opportunities to interact directly um, with policing. Uh, through that. And so we're really excited about those kinds of partnerships that are um, emerging through this. Our English department has a wide variety of degrees. I think that one of the things that we've found over the last few years is that students are not only interested in traditional uh, traditional kinds of literature degrees and the skills and abilities that come with that, but they're also interested in more writing, more of those soft skills um, in research writing um, and communicating that come through an English degree. And so English is a uh, uh, one of those double majors or double degrees that's very popular across the university. And um, over 50% of students coming into the university take at least one English class, even though it's not a requirement. Um, our general arts degree is the degree that I'm the advisor for, and that's a three-year degree. We typically don't have students coming into the university directly into that degree. Uh, if they do, they're in Arts One, which you'll see uh, below that. And that's a degree that is trying to help students who know that they're interested in humanities and social sciences look over the range of possibilities and decide areas of focus that they would like uh, to get their degree or double degree in. So it's kind of a sampler um, for that first year program. The general arts degree is usually uh, a, a degree that students who want to finish in three years can take. And it is a it does get um, students a degree quickly and it's offered completely online. And so students who are interested, if uh, this is a degree that students often who have to go home for various reasons, but still want to finish their degree program, have followed up through the general arts degree, but it isn't usually a degree that we offer students coming into the university. History is uh, one of our degrees that offers an online degree program as well. Um, history also offers a public history stream that gets students out into the world doing hands-on work in museums um, and other uh, archives and other places right now our history department is working on a really interesting um, project with our community, trying to gather up information about um, some of this, this COVID activity and the ways that it's impacting our, uh, our communities right now. But one of the most interesting things about um, those kinds of outreach programs for the history department is that they often set students up with um, internships and other kinds of interactions in places where they will go on to get uh, jobs after they have finished their work here. Um, our Indigenous Learning Program is one that uh, we often don't find other programs across Canada with that name of Indigenous Learning. Um, often that's called Indigenous Studies elsewhere. And as one of our faculty members um, told me, the reason we don't want to call it Indigenous Studies is because Indigenous people have been studied for too long and we want to be able to help all of our um, nation and community learn about the lives of Indigenous people past, present and future. And so um, in many ways our Indigenous uh, learning program is about Indigenous futures in um, our nation and elsewhere. We're one of the few programs um, in Canada that has a program on worldwide Indigenous or that has a uh, sorry, a course on worldwide indigeneity that helps study um, how indigenous peoples across the world live uh, in comparing and contrasting to indigenous peoples in Canada. Through our indigenous learning program, we have had students go work in um, Australia, uh, Ecuador and Mexico with other indigenous communities in those places and um, we're doing a wide range of land-based um, opportunities for student, students which is hands-on learning about indigenous lives um, in, in the present tense. Um, I've, uh, our interdisciplinary studies program is a program that's based in Aurelia. Uh, it is a wonderful program for helping students pull together um, a wide range of course types across disciplines and faculties. 
one of the, uh, there are a number of strands in that program from um, international, an international studies kind of state, uh, strand to a social justice strand to an environmental and sustainability strand. And those, uh, those sort of strands of the programs are all about helping students pull together courses and ideas that will help them answer some of these persistent um, and difficult challenges that are facing our world in the future and having responses to those. Um, our languages program is typically a French program in Canada. Um, uh, for those um, who are not in Canada, we have uh, two national languages, uh, French and English here. And so we're helping students prepare their French language for teaching in French and also uh, for careers in the public service where people need to have um, both languages here. In addition, in the education program, we have numerous indigenous language programs, but those are not offered through our faculty, uh, but they are programs that we want to uh, help students uh, get those languages as well as French and English, and we have programs that will help them uh, work on uh, both of those uh, language sets, or all three of those. Our media, film, and communications program is uh, based in Aurelia, and that is a program that is entirely uh, based on a model of being um, hands-on so that students learn how to do the kinds of media studies, um, things that they will be asked to do when they're um, out in the world in a job. They also develop a lot of uh, uh, theoretical skills. So there's basically three strands to this program. One is theory, one is um, hands-on skills, and then one is um, getting into practice. So being placed, placement, um, and getting out and getting opportunities to actually do the work. Uh, our music program, uh, we just had a program go online in music uh, this month, which is really exciting. Um, it's a certificate program, but uh, one of the things that I know students are concerned about now is how our programs are going to function in online environments, particularly programs like music, which we think of as having so many face-to-face -face components. We have one of the few now online certificate programs in piano studies um, in Canada and in the world, and it looks like it's going to be a really exciting um, program, and it's one that our professor, Evgeny uh, Chuganov, has been uh, working with Russian music programs on for many years. So looks to be really exciting and is helping many of our teachers understand how they can um, do better online education no matter which um, sort of area they're in. Our outdoor recs uh, part, our outdoor rec, um, parks and tourism is uh, really a one of a kind program in Canada. Although a number of programs are developing um, programming in some of these areas, there don't seem to be any programs that bring all of these three areas together and that give students so much opportunity to be working hands on in the wilderness. And, um, and we are situated in a place that makes that um, absolutely possible. I'm just going to encourage everyone who is looking at um, Lakehead today to please also just look at some of the Instagram um, accounts for Thunder Bay and to look at the beautiful, beautiful place that we're set in for that outdoor um, recreation program. We just have some amazing opportunities because of our location here. Our philosophy program is, um, it's an active philosophy program. We have had fabulous updates in the last five years that are, again, helping students answer some of those really persistent questions that we're facing. One of our philosophy professors has a book right now um, about uh about the world um, in climate change and is doing some amazing work on that. He's been, um, you know, all over the country and the world talking about that book. Uh, and I, I would encourage you, his name's Todd Dufresne, I would encourage you to look at that work. Um, and in addition, they're updating many, many of their 
courses, and they have a fabulous course right now called Defense Against the Dark Arts um, that's trying to help students understand um, a lot of what's going on in the world and how we can defend our minds against um, things like fake news and all of those things, understanding what's real in the world. Um, our political science and pre-law program uh, works with not only pre-law, but um, things like policy and, uh, and um, the Canadian legal system, world, um, world political systems, and uh, we have some great classes about Africa, Asia, um, sort of all over the world there. So um, many of our political science students do go on to law school. Um, but they also go into many other kinds of graduate programs or work as policy analysts and other. Uh, our sociology, um, our, our sociology program has a variety of strands. I just got a message saying that my internet may be unstable, so I'm going to hurry through this a little bit. I'm sorry about that. Okay. So we have fabulous programs in sociology. One of the ones that I'd like to highlight for you is about food security um, and helping us understand food security in our region and globally. Um, our visual arts program uh, has wonderful hands-on components that get students out designing their own senior show and presenting a show in the community. And our women's studies program does outreach into um, a wide variety of community areas. And I think that what you'll hear through all of these is our commitment to social justice and social innovation and um, encouraging our students to be able to develop, to develop skills in those areas. Awesome. So we do have a question while I have you um, at a break there. So the question is, just give me one second to read it. Are there online courses available for international students similar to what you mentioned about the music certificate that we recently launched? Um, so yes, uh, I would say one of the things that this sort of space that we're in right now has prepared us for is developing all of all of our programming to be available fully online to international students next year. While it is always our goal to have students here on campus, um, and we are always excited to greet students on our two beautiful campuses, we um, want to make sure that we have uh, courses available for all of our international students, whether uh, we just put a ceramics course on online for uh, our fall semester. So I don't know exactly how all of those things are working, but I know that our teachers are working hard to make sure our full catalog of courses will be available to students who might need to access them from any place in the world. For sure. Um, and I know that we're going to dive into a few of these courses and do program highlights in just a moment here. Um, and we also have some graduate courses offered within Faculty of Social Sciences and Humanities. So we only have a few um, offered, so we can chat about those. And obviously, the asterisk does mark those master's programs which do offer course-based options. Um, is, is there any highlights that you would want to mention about these graduate programs? Um, I'd really like to talk about the social justice program because we're working very hard to make those courses um, fully accessible. And by that, we mean that um, students, wherever they are in the world or in Canada, would be able to access those courses as they would be based on their um, their own issues of ability, of family circumstance. Um, with social justice, where the the goal is to make things both, you know, um, to make things available, and so we're trying to students understand work that they're doing um, out in the world. And so I think we're having some very good luck with that. Um, and our students leave that program able to do all kinds of things, but particularly to work in the area that I would call social innovation, how we make changes um, in, the, in our societies. Awesome. 
So I will take this opportunity again to remind our viewers, if you have any questions for us um, and you're joining us on Zoom, you can use the Q&A function. If you're joining us on Facebook, you can always use the comment section. And if you are watching this as a recording, you can comment on that video and we will receive that notification. Um, I know I had a dedicated question period. I'm going to flip over to the Q&A to see if we have any. Um, so one of the questions, what are some of the recommended course electives for undergraduate poli-sci poli students uh, or pre-law students? So uh, that would be a question that I would want to send someone to um, one of our political science advisors. That's, uh, there are so many options available that I would want to make sure that we're getting students the very best choices possible for them. Um, but I know in that first year, there are really quite a lot um, of, of course electives available. So that would be one that if we could get that sent, uh, that question sent to Patrick Kane, um, who is the advisor and um, chair of that program, I know that he would be able to better advise that student. For sure, yeah. So what I did for that student, um, I, I don't have their name right now, but if you would like to send us an email, welcome at lakeidu.ca, that is International's main email. Um, in there, all you have to ask is the exact same question, what courses are recommended, course electives are recommended, recommended for, me for undergraduate poli-sci and pre-law students. Um, and then you can mention that you are, were on today's live and our team will, of course, connect you with Patrick. Uh, as Betsy mentioned, he is the, the coordinator of that program or did you say he was the chair, sorry? He's the chair of the department, but he also coordinates the pre-law program. So you're right on both counts. Awesome. Alrighty, so moving on, um, we do want to chat about program highlights. And I'm really excited about this one because it is outdoor recreation, parks and tourism. Um, I know that we did a brief overview in the undergraduate slides, but I want to take this opportunity to dive a little more into it. Um, so right now, I'll pass it back off to Betsy to chat a bit about it. And um, if we do have any questions, please feel free to ask. Sure. I think one of, so there are so many pieces of this program that I think are interesting and would, um, would pique the interest of our students, but one of the most important is the amount of time students can spend out in the field actually um, being outdoors and understanding how to do that kind of uh, tourism work. How do we get people into spaces? How do we do risk management to help them be in those spaces safely? Um, because when we look at this very picture, I think it probably, um, as, as a mom anyway, it makes me a little bit nervous. It looks fabulous, but they do, um, all of the students who go on these trips have to manage their own risk management pieces of those trips. And then they have to manage um, how they're going to, um, yeah, you know, they have to decide what goods they need to bring for a trip of, you know, between five and 14 days. Um, I think there's going to be a great uh, photo later of a sailing trip that they have to completely decide their destinations, how they're going to manage each of those pieces. So um, there really are some just wonderful active pieces of this degree program. This program also has um, really an interesting component in terms of um, working with and for indigenous partners um, and how we can support our local um, communities here, but also indigenous partners really any place in the world. Um, because so often we have kinds of tourism that go into places and don't consider the impacts of what we're doing um, on the people who live in those areas and how tourism could actually be um, an economic support and many other kinds of support. So I think our program also adds that really important piece to the work that students do and what they learn about. Awesome and I know um, I can certainly reiterate what I've heard from friends that have done this program and from uh, colleagues too is the fact that the access to the natural environment and the natural what you might want to call a natural laboratory is so significant in Thunder Bay. I mean literally students can walk out of any one of our academic buildings and uh, maybe 30 seconds a minute away they're they're already in the trails of our beautiful campus and they can walk around and that ties so closely into some of the learning aspects 
Yeah. Also, like Betsy prefaced, we will be diving into a unique learning opportunity within this faculty or within this program, part of me, where our students do get an opportunity to do a sailing expedition. So I'm, I'm excited to chat about that. Yeah. And Jordan, I do want to add that just, um, you know, I walk those trails um, at noon a lot of days when we could be on campus. And I would see fox and beavers and otters. And um, just this last week, we were watching steelhead trout swim upstream, right? And so it really is, um, we are sighted in an amazing place for natural beauty. Sure, definitely. So um, the next program that I wanted to dive into is the Media, Film, and Communications program. So this is a program housed out of our Aurelia campus, um, but I'll pass it off to Betsy to kind of do the broad overview and talk about some of the unique offerings too. Sure. I probably talked a little bit too much about this uh, previously, but I do want to say that one of the things that I think is most interesting about this program is that it, it brings together those three different strands. One is actually getting out into the world and applying skills. One is doing applied skills in the classroom where students learn really um, sort of the most important um, software programs, they're learning Adobe Suite, they're learning um, so editing programs, those sorts of things, um, as well as the theoretical, what, what's happening in the media? How can we create a more just media? And I don't want to keep returning to that, but the pillars of our um, academic plan are really about things like, um, you know, social justice, experiential learning, and working with um, Indigenous partnerships across our nation. And so those are also the cores of this program. And that's what makes our media studies program so, I think, interesting and different from what's going on in other programs in the nation. For sure, yeah, and I also know that you mentioned um, on a previous slide that students are, they, they get to participate in an internship opportunity. So I know I did a little research myself and I know we also, we've met with um, Alice Donater, who is the program coordinator for Media Film and Communications and she elaborated on this as well. But students have been involved in placements at Sun, Sunshine Radio, Rogers TV, Flashback Photography. Um, as well as some nonprofit cultural sectors, including the Aurelia Museum, um, the YMCA, the Aurelia Opera House. Some very interesting opportunities for our current students in this program to be involved in the community and actually, actually apply their learning within um, that environment. I, I think that's a really good point, Jordan, and I love how you talked about the range of things there because they aren't just working with places like Rogers TV and things that we think of media outlets. They're really helping other organizations understand how to do their own media um, work, and that's a really important piece because both kinds of um, positions are going to be important out there in the world. And I think that also really speaks to one of the pillars that Lakin is committed to in, in really involving our community and building on that community too. So having a positive change for external stakeholders. So it's not all about Lakin, it's not all about our students. Um, but of course, with the connections that we're making, it is to best in, uh, enrich the student experience. So it's all interconnected and it's really great to see it all happening at once. So the next program I know is, as you mentioned, one of the largest in the faculty. It's criminology and it's very popular. Um, I myself, when I was a Lakehead student, um, looked into some courses within criminology, even considered a minor. I know that's a possibility for students as well. Um, but I'll let you to cover the, the high level overview of criminology. Okay. Well, our criminology faculty are some of our highest performing researchers. Um, all our criminology faculty right now are holding um, grants. Some of those are certainly, you know, the uh, tri-council grants, which are federal grants, but they're also holding grants from uh, directly from local police um, units. And so the, uh, right now, one of our faculty members is doing research with police safety in this time of COVID-19. So how have, um, how have police calls differed um, from 
what they were before. I think that there's some ideas out there that we're getting um, more police calls that are in certain areas, domestic violence, mental health, those kinds of things, but wanted to study whether that's really true. And in those kinds of situations that were already very dangerous um, for police officers, is there um, added risk because of being in this pandemic time? And so that research is, um, is ongoing and is happening in two different police forces in Southern Ontario. And I think will give us some really interesting data about how we deal with um, you know, our first responders, how they're going to deal with their own safety in this high risk time, and how they can intervene in ways that are going to make it safer for the people who, uh, with whom they're interacting. So that's just one example um, of, of faculty research, but our students are involved in those research teams. And that's one of the most exciting things about Lakehead is that all of our faculty are trying to um, involve undergraduate researchers in those kinds of research projects and they do an excellent job of that. Awesome and I know that the criminology program does put a specific emphasis on practitioner orientation and the criminal the Canadian criminal justice system. I also know that they have three thematic areas of focus throughout the program's courses and that's social justice and human rights law and legal institutions and forensic science science and criminalistics so i know the last part there forensic science and criminalistics that's a very uh a, a very large portion of the program and also uh something that the students we really see enjoy and we hear some really great feedback uh, but speaking to the other two thematic focuses obviously we've built this program out as an institution to ensure that our graduates and our program, our current students in the program are getting a well-rounded education behind the Canadian justice system. Absolutely right, including courses that are going to be about the history of criminal justice in Canada and um, various uh, access to justice um, in the term in the history of Canada and how we can make changes to the future of um, the future of criminal justice based on what we know about what happened in the past. For sure, and I think this would be a great opportunity to mention that we actually sat down with um, the program co coordinator, Alana Soliner, and we did a faculty Friday with her and she dove into uh, the entire program for an entire hour. Um, we got an opportunity to also hear about some of the research that she's been doing as a faculty member and um, I myself, I was extremely intrigued throughout the session um, and I'm sure that our viewers, they had some really great questions. So I encourage you, if you want to check out the full video with the program coordinator, um, you can head over to our YouTube channel and the playlist you're looking for is Lakehead International Live. Yeah, and I would say that our criminology folks are some of our um, just most impressive researchers. Um, on, we have many on our faculty, but they are really um, doing amazing things right now. For sure, definitely. Um, so one of the last programs that I wanted to highlight before we dive into unique learning opportunities is visual arts. So this program is housed out of the Thunder Bay campus, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but I will let Bet Betsy elaborate on this. Yeah. Um, so students in Aurelia can take some visual arts classes, but it is housed. You can't get a you can't get a degree on the Aurelia campus. Um, the the main program is housed uh, in its own building, shared with music. So we have a fine arts building um, on the Lakehead campus. And uh, one of the highlights of this, as I think I mentioned earlier, is that senior show where students are able to um, put together really as curators, uh, they are able to curate the whole Thunder Bay Museum of Art um, for a show that hangs for a number of weeks. Uh, this year, of course, because COVID happened right after the show was hung, we weren't able to get in in person to see that, but we were able to photograph the whole show and get all of the student art online. And um, I think students have been having some pretty good um, opportunities to learn about how they can sell their art online now because we have sort of gone to this new, um, they learned a new skill that they weren't planning, let's put it that way. Um, but it, 
they were still able to learn how to hang a show, how to choose where things go, how to plan the reception that goes with the show, and how to get the whole community there. And this is one of those activities uh, for our campus that is one of the biggest. We usually have more than 500 people on opening night. At the, is, uh, it's an amazing night and an amazing opportunity for those in um, painting, drawing, uh, sculpture, ceramics, and, and in fact, art history. So we really cover all of the traditional areas of art. And in most of those areas, we have classes that I would think of as non-traditional or at least non-Western. We have non-Western art, we have indigenous art, um, and we have a whole variety. Uh, we taught a course last year, not this year, um, that, was, um, that was about the feminist art movements. And so there's a lot of very contemporary content as well as um, a, a traditional fine arts um, experience. And I guess I just want to say one more thing. Um, a number of our professors take students out into the community and um, create mural and public art spaces um, in the community and have had a wonderful opportunity doing that over the years. And so uh, there are quite a few places around Thunder Bay that you can go back into a back alley and find sort of a beautiful garden area that has been um, reframed from a back alley into a space where there's mural sculpture and other kinds of things that was brought about by the work of our students in a public art course. That's awesome. That's, that's really interesting to hear. Um, be mindful of time. I know that uh, we have a little less than 10 minutes uh, until we wrap things up. So for the next few slides, for the unique learning opportunities, um, we'll kind of power through them. Um, for the first unique learning opportunity, I'll pass it off to Patrick Carr, uh, who's going to chat about the sailing expedition that uh, where outdoor rec recreation and parks and tourism students uh, partake in in their fourth year sometimes. Yeah, thanks, Jordan. Um, this um, this particular uh, sailing expedition is, is quite unique. Um, Eleven Lakehead students uh, were able to uh, plan and then take a 12-day sailing expedition on Lake Superior. Uh, this is a part of a fourth-year elective class in the Faculty of Outdoor Recreation, Parks, and Tourism, um, and it's uh, each student acquires what they call competent crew sailing, uh, and it's, a, it's actual uh, a training certificate that uh, is offered by the International Sail and Power Academy. Um, the students got to do some really cool stuff during this trip, um, but the, one of the things they did that I thought was really interesting is they did an overnight sailing portion where they navigated by traditional means. Um, so this is kind of by the stars uh, and, and using traditional tools. Obviously, they used uh, you know modern technology to make sure that they were safe and, and to make sure that nothing went wrong. Um, and uh, they got to visit the National Marine Conservation Area, um, which is kind of the joint space on Lake Superior that is uh, shared between Canada and the United States. Um, it's really a unique program, and I, I'd say it's probably the only class at Lakehead that involves a 12-day sailing trip. Um, so an opportunity really to, uh, to, to get to practice some of the hands-on skills that you've been taught about in a really fun and unique way. For sure, yeah. And I know um, that, that that same trip, the, the screen that you're looking at right now, this is a screen capture of a six minute video that a student who participated in a trip a couple of years ago made. And that video, I must say, I took the six minutes to watch it and I was jealous. I was a business graduate um, and I loved my program, of course, but I cannot say that I got to embark on a 12 day sailing expedition. Um, and so it really speaks to, again, that unique learning opportunity that we're able to provide here uh, within Lakehead. So the next one I want to chat about, I know we already dove into this, so I, I won't keep it on too long, but the Juried Student Art Exhibition. Um, Betsy already covered what we've done this year, given the current situation, what we've done in the year past. But one thing I did want to mention is that um, a part of this exhibition is the fact that we actually um, celebrate our students with up to $7,000 in uh, achievement awards that are presented based on their artwork. So I know that um, those awards are handed out to a variety of different students for, uh, a, from a variety of different organizations and faculties that support uh, this exhibition. 
Um, if you are interested in learning more, of course, I encourage you to explore uh, on our visual arts page online on our website, uh, and you can learn more about this, but I won't spend too much time because I know we covered it in quite a bit of detail. Chatting about our success stories, I know um, students often wonder, so where have Lakehead graduates gone? What have they done? What have they been involved in? Um, so I'll pass it off to Patrick to briefly mention uh, what this one represents to us. So this is, uh, this is a kind of unique uh, 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 success story. Um, at the Chatham-Kent Black Historical Society, uh, one of our history alumni, uh, Sam Meredith, is the executive director and curator of, of their museum. It's a not-for-profit organization, that's, and it's dedicated to discovery, research, and preservation of uh, Black history founded in the municipality of Chatham-Kent in the city of Chatham, so in southern Ontario, uh, here in Canada. Um, it's a really cool place for uh, our history grads to work, um, and it's an exciting and high-level position, I think, for a history grad to have. Certainly, yeah. Um, some of our other success stories are that of Coleman Hell. Uh, his full name is Coleman Richard Hell, and he's a Canadian musician from Thunder Bay, Ontario, and he's a graduate of Lakehead's English program. Uh, so he actually is a very well-recognized artist and musician. So he's singled out by Spotify as one of the few Canadian artists, artists poised to be a huge hit. Um, in 2015, his song Two Heads has accumulated over 95 million streams on Spotify and is certified four times platinum in Canada and gold in the US. Um, he also released his debut album in 2016, which includes the platinum single Fireproof and gold single Devotion. Um, a quick note about this was actually when he was interviewed about his debut album Summerland, um, he noted that most of the album was actually written in a cabin or in Northern Ontario. And so we can inference that he most likely wrote uh, in the Thunder Bay area or in our surrounding environment at a family cabin or a friend cabin um, where he worked with friends on that album. So it's really great to see where some of our graduates are going and how successful they are too. So last but not least um, for today's session, I know we have a few minutes left. I'm going to pass it back to Betsy just to chat very briefly about the career opportunities that covered the entire faculty. Sure, and I, I don't want to talk about each of these individually. I think what I want to say about career opportunities is that when you're in the social sciences and humanities, it's very unlikely that you are going to English after you get an English major, right? It's not like being um, in the engineering school where you know you're going to become an engineer. So what we're trying to do is help students develop knowledges and skills that will enable them to um, take up any of these kinds of careers that they're interested in. And so we can help direct people toward courses that will help them develop a career. That question earlier about what do we do if we want to, what do we want for electives in, in pre-law, for example. Um, we can do that really with any um, of those degree programs is help choose electives and help choose um, sort of co-degrees or shared majors that will help you um, go into whatever area you want to do and how to develop those skills um, that you want to take away with you. And um, I I think that one of the things a humanities degree really offers is those soft skills that we are knowing are more and more important um, to getting students um, career success. Awesome. Well, I'm really happy that you touched on uh, all of those points to just speak to the variety that's available for our graduates and kind of the fact that we really empower our students to pursue their passions. Um, and then those passions will lead to their ideal career choice, of course. Be mindful of time. We will unfortunately have to pass up on this outstanding alumni feature. Um, if you would like to learn more about Vani, you can always visit us on our website, lakehead.ca forward slash international. There's a section dedicated to our student voices and Vani is featured. So I, I certainly encourage you to check her, um, her testimonial out. Um, I will note that I don't have any questions open right now. Um, so I will proceed with my wrap up. 
Uh, once again, I'll remind you to follow us on our social media. So we are on Facebook, Lakehead University International. We also have a Facebook group called the Incoming Class of 2020 for Lakehead University. And as of this morning when I checked, we had 244 members already on that group. Um, and I know I've already talked about this in previous webinars, but I always like to reiterate that some of the conversations happening on online there are really amazing to see. So students are meeting future classmates, students are meeting um, friends that, they're, that are in their hometown already, um, and they're also maybe even potentially meeting future roommates uh, for when they do arrive on campus. As I mentioned, we all are also on Instagram, Lake at International. Every Tuesday and Thursday, we do an Instagram Live at, Easter, at 10 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, um, and that's with the current student. We dive into their student experience, their academic experience, living on campus, living off campus, all sorts of stuff. Um, so I certainly encourage you to check out our Instagram. We're on Twitter, Lake at INTL, and then we're also on YouTube, Lake at University. We do have two dedicated playlists on that channel for our international audience, Lake at International and Lake at International Lives. The Lives portion of the playlist is all of our pre-recorded or recorded webinars, I should say. Um, and the international, Lake at International playlist is a general uh, get to know Lake and type playlist for our international audience. Last but not least, I always encourage our students to take a virtual campus tour. I know Betsy had mentioned that uh, on her lunches, she sometimes likes to walk around campus and go through the trails. This is a perfect opportunity for you to do the exact same uh, and walk around campus virtually. So from the comfort of your own home, you can be hanging out on your couch and your bed and there's no, uh, there's no schedule to this. It's only at your convenience that you take this tour. All you have to do is visit lakehidu.ca forward slash tours and there is a quick link to our virtual tour through you visit. So I do want to take this opportunity to thank everyone for joining us on our viewer side and then of course thanking our special guest Dr. Betsy Birmingham. It was an absolute pleasure to host you today um, and we thank you for dedicating your time. I know that you're quite busy um, just in general but of course given the current situation you're probably significantly more busy even. So thank you again for joining us. I think today's conversation quite covered tons of uh, ground and I'm very excited to hopefully work with you in the future also. Thank you so much, Jordan, and thanks for giving me this opportunity to talk to the folks out there today. Awesome, already. So I will wrap it up there and I do sure hope that uh, everyone joins us next Tuesday on Instagram Live to meet Michelle, an environmental science student on the Thunder Bay campus from Malaysia. Thank you.